do ano. E Fernando Valadares? Is he here? No. Hello, I'm here. Can okay. you hear me? You can share. Okay, you can share your presentation. Okay, just one Perfect. second. Okay. Well, you can see the here. next talk will be about electronic structure investigations in metal halide perovskites using DFT minus half quasi particle correction, which will be done by Fernando Valadares at ITA. Okay, you can start. Okay, thank you for the presentation. So, good afternoon, everyone. I will present in the name of my group, uh, the group of semiconducting materials and nanotechnology the GMSN from ITO. And this, in this talk, I'd like to show you how we correlated using ab initio techniques, the structural parameters, the chemical composition, and the optical properties of perovskite systems for solar cell applications. So starting explaining a bit about perovskites, they are a class of semiconduct semiconductors comprising hundreds of different compositions, of which the most known uh, material is the MAPI. The, this is the cubic, the, in this image, I have the cubic cell for the MAPI, in which in the vortices of the, the cell, we have methyl ammonium me molecules, at the center of the faces, you have iodine atoms, and at the center of the cell, you have a lead atom, forming this uh, octahedron here. So they are very interesting for uh, solar cells because in the last 11 years, th those devices, um, their efficiency has increased from 3.8% to 25.5%, which is a level close to silicon technologies, which have been around since, since 1940. And besides that, uh, they are also very less costly to, to produce. But on the other hand, the perovskite solar cells are much, uh, they are not too resistant because they suffer from oxidation and moisture and high temperatures. So one possible path of, for improving these qualities is to investigate different compositions of perovskites, alternative compositions, to see if they have good properties, optical properties, and still uh, be resistant. resistant. So in my work, I, and the objective is to select these 48 different perovskites in the cubic structure and study their optical properties. And here show the, the different compositions I, I will consider. So in, instead of iodine, I choose as well bromine and chloride. Instead of lead, I consider tin, germanium, and silicon. And in place of the methyl ammonium, I can also use the formamidinium molecule or rubidium or cesium atoms. So, as I said, we'll use abnisio techniques, uh, in, special, in specific the density function of theory, which transposes the problem of finding the uh, wave function of the crystal using Schrodinger's equation to the much simpler problem of finding the electronic density of the periodic crystal. And we'll use uh, spin orbit, orbit coupling, we'll consider it, and use the Vienna ab initio simulation package for implementing the code. And the uh, one advantage of our methodology is that we use the DFT minus half correction, which was developed by our group in 2008. And it's a correction method that um, you can achieve better band gaps than default DFT, which are known to be underestimated. There are other correction methods in the literature, such as GW and fu hybrid functionals, but the DFT minus half is actually very less uh, computationally costly. So it's much, fa much faster to calculate. So in the basic idea is to correct the constant potential by including this, this, this term here that will include the self-energy terms of the band extremities into the band gap calculation. So the theoretical gap will be directly comparable to the experimental gap. Proceeding to our results, uh, I'll first show... Just, I'll first show 
how the the structural parameters are controlled by the chem uh, chemical composition of the cell. And two parameters are of interest here. The bond length between the allogen and the metal and the bonding, bonding angle between in this chain of allogen, metal and allogen. So uh, in these tables I present these results for each metal atom, the lead, tin, germanium and silicon. And uh, here in each column has the maximum, mean, and minimum bond lengths and the angles, bonding angles in the three crystallographic directions. I just want to show some trends here, not too detailed. And the first thing is that the inorganic perovskites containing cesium and rubidium, they remain in the ideal cubic structure. So all the angles are 180 degrees and all bond lengths are equal to half the lattice parameter. That's not a case for the hybrid perovskites, though, which contain these molecules from imidinium and methylammonium, which break this cubic symmetry. So you see some dispersion in the values of bond and angle. And this dispersion, this distortion actually increases the smaller is the metal atom. So I'll compare here the silicon perovskites containing form imidinium and the lead perovskites. In this, lat this latter case, the from lead perovskites, the angles go as low as 174, which is a 6 degrees distortion only. But for the silicon perovskites, the, the distortion are as high as 21 degrees. And the same trend you observe in the bond lengths. So the maximum and minimum bond lengths for the lead perovskites are, are kind of uh, pr uh, approximate. They are close together. Uh, but in the case of silicon, the maximum bond length is actually more than twice the minimum bond length. So we can classify the different perovskites in terms of its distortions. You have the inorganic perovskites, which do not have distortion, the hybrid lead and some of the thin ones, which have a mild distortion, which is uh, approximately equal to the ideal cubic. But in the other extremity, you have those two silicon, these two silicon perovskites containing iodine and chlorine and methyl ammonium, in which the distortion is so great that the allogen, they become further away from one of the silicon and becomes closer to the other silicon. So the octahedron actually breaks, forming these pyramidal structures that we call MX3 segregation. So this would be a complete segregation. But there are also the intermediate perovskites of intermediate distortion, which are the hybrid germanium, some of the silicon and some of the tan perovskites, which have present a partial segregation. That is, this distortion only occurs in one or two crystallographic directions, not on the three of them. So we should expect to see uh, an impact of this distortion in the band structure. And I can, I can explain this using orbital considerations because the bottom of the conduction band is formed by a hybridization of a p orbital from the allogen and a p orbital from the metal atom in this configuration here, you see. So I've represented in this image out of phase lobes as having different uh, fillings. So if it's clear filling, it's uh, in phase with other clear fillings. In this here, you see uh, an, a bonding interaction because they are in phase. So for what we see here is that for each bonding interaction, you have an anti-bonding force of equal magnitude and opposite signs. So in the crystal, you should have a net non-bonding equilibrium. But when you introduce the segregation, you approximate the, the allogens that interact with anti-bonding forces and this causes the crystal state to increase its energy. So that's what you see here, the band gap opens. So this influences the absorption of the solar cell. Uh, so for a complete segregation, we should observe this increase and for a partial segregation, we should always observe this increase, but in less, uh, just a bit smaller. So proceeding to the actual electronic calculations with the FT minus half, in this graph I show in the x-axis the experimental band gap 
and in the y-axis the calculated band gap and the red data points correspond to the corrected band gaps and the blue crosses to the default DFT. So what we see here is that our results, they, act, they correct the well-known underestimation of DFT, got becoming very close to, these, uh, to this correspondence line. And we also see that our method has an accuracy in this case equal to GW, which is the state-of-the-art method despite having much lower cost. And here I show uh, a graph of the maximum conversion efficiency of a single junction saw cell. This is a theoretical result uh, as a function of the band gap of the material. And I, I placed all the band gaps that we found here as red dots. And I found 16 materials in this range uh, of materials that would present an efficiency higher than 30%. Uh, so we have 16 of these materials between those we studied and many of these haven't been studied in detail neither experimentally nor theoretically so they are good research paths for the future and finally I would like to show how these uh, those distortions actually influence the band gap as we expect so here I have a graph of the corrected band gaps one for each metal lead tin germanium silicon the x-axis, uh, the halogen atoms, and the colors correspond to the, to the cation, so uh, blue and, and, and green for the hybrid perovskites, and yellow and red for the inorganic perovskites. And what you see is that the hybrid indeed have a higher band gap due to its distortion. And this difference increases uh, the higher the distortion you put until you have here in the case of silicon, in which this difference is really uh, impressive due to the uh, complete MX3 segregation. So in conclusion, I could establish this relation between both the chemical composition, the structure, and the band gap, so we can better know how to manipulate these properties. Uh, I I showed that the DFT minus half method devised by our group is very efficient for, for our initial calculations of band gaps. And also we've, we found 16 different materials that can be possible uh, materials for composing the absorbent layers of solar cells. And finally, I would like to, uh, to indicate you, to invite you to check our publication that we recently reported these results in. Uh, where we explore in much more detail all these relations and many more other things that we found in these interesting class of materials. And thank you. Well, the session is open for questions. I have one question. Yeah, El Sabino? Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, actually, I have two, it's very short. Uh, so the first one is, uh, did you consider like super cells, larger super cells for the inorganic halide perovskite? Because normally when you consider like the rotation, rotated one, uh, uh, you see like a distortion in the bond, bond uh, in the angles of uh, like a lead, iodine, or whatever highlighted uh, uh, atom there. So did you consider these kind of structures? Uh, Fernando, thank you for your question. Um, we did not, in this case, we only studied the unit, per, uh, unit cell perovskites. And you're right, if you consider uh, smaller cells, the molecules would also be probably rearranged and th this would change some, uh, some results. You have some variation there. But uh, no, in this case, we only consider the unit cells and they, they show some trends. But uh, you, you have to pay attention to this detail. You know, th th there can be some dynamical distortion there due to the molecules. Okay. Uh, and the, the second question is very, is very fast. Uh, I like this DFT minus half, uh, but it's, is it possible to calculate like defects, uh, properties like formation energy using this methodology? Uh, I have not done this, 
But one of my colleagues in, the, in our group, it, he studies this in special with perovskites and also for quantum computing applications. So I know that it can be used, but I cannot detail further. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I just have one. Uh, we know that uh, GW calculations is very uh, computational expense and LDR minus half it's, it's not as cheaper. Uh, however, do you have the, the, the idea if there is any GW calculations on, on, on the, the examples that you showed? Uh, uh, sorry, can you repeat the last part of the question? Do you have the knowledge of any GW uh, calculations on the systems that you have studied? Yes, yes. In, in, um... I could not show it explicitly here, but in the publication we we compared it directly. So I I searched theoretical calculations with using GW and compared the accuracy numerically, and it's uh, it's very uh, close to each other. BFC minus half GW. Uh -huh. Okay. Is there any other questions? Uh, just a single one about uh, the, the silicon part, if you can turn to 17, slide 17, I, ha I, I imagine. Is this one? Yeah, yeah, so, so uh, the, this uh, for silicon is very different, really very different because mm -hmm. of, the, of the bonds, is, is it? It's because of the segregation, because... Yeah. Uh, the different bonds yes and, yes but but uh, do you have any any charge concentration on on that uh, three bonded uh, group why Char is it so so small the gap that's that's the point uh, is it so because of silicon and it should be because like that anyhow or is it because of the segregation there are like uh, many parameters here to evaluate the for the case of the so we have the chemical aspect of the uh, p orbital of the silicon p and s orbitals uh, and you have the size of the atom so as it, it is a smaller atom it actually decreases the band gap and you can see this in the inorganic perovskites that doesn't have distortion so you can analyze the chemical aspect but the the structural aspect you can see better here in the hybrid perovskites and you have this weird uh, trend with relation for example to lead because you see all this this blue line it has uh, a similar segregation a partial segregation but these two data points here and here these are the two that have a complete segregation that's why they stand out you know because of exactly this effect the same thing occurs here. That's why you have this crossing because they, they go from a completely uh, non-segregated to a partial segregation, segregation. That's why you have this crossing. So this should explain these this weird trends. And I guess you, you said you mentioned something else. I don't remember now. Does this ask, ask, uh, answer your question? Well, kind of, yes. Yeah, it's very weird. Oh. It is weird. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but uh, just one thing more. Uh, you all should also uh, think why why you have this trend that why doesn't this one with bromine have a higher gap? And mm -hmm. this the other thing you should pay attention as Sabino mentioned before the uh, so these are unit cell calculations and you. Maybe if we have uh, bigger calculations, you can you uh, bigger cells, the distortions would be different, and you would see these having a complete segregation, for example. So this, uh, uh, these results they they indicate some trends, but they are not um, they are not written okay. in stone. Let's say. <laughs> okay. Is there more questions or not? 
If don't, so we like to thank all the speakers of this session. The session is now closed. Thank you very much for the for the attendance. And now we have some time to before the poster section.